Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 13 of building a real working Iron Man inspired exosuit that I can walk around in with power legs and move my powered arm around. And we did some testing early on about the sort of weight that can lift. And last time we managed to control it. So I've got some buttons and switches to control three out of the four axis, uh, which work pretty well. And I can almost just about walk as well, although I'm manually controlling the legs with joysticks. So this time we need to replace all of these manual controls and we need to put in a kind of handle attached to the arm that I can push around that measures my force and that'll actually drive the arm axis. And we also need to put some pressure sensors around the knees so the suit moves as I walk. Last time we had a quick recap on this and this is something I made in a previous episode which is basically a kind of floating joystick platform. And this measures all the angles with potentiometers and it can work out where I am in 3D space basically. And I was gonna use this to drive the arm. However, it's quite sloppy and the arm is a little bit wobbly, so I quite like something much stiffer attached to the arm where I have to exert more force on it in each axis to actually push it around, and that will electronically trigger it to move the joints. So instead of that, we're going to use force-sensitive resistors, which are little pressure pads, and their resistance changes as you push them. Now remember, we've got to work out four axis and move in essentially eight directions, two directions on each axis, so we're going to need a number of these inside a stiff handle, which is flexible in all directions. Right, so I've made a yellow handle here that goes over some 18 mil steel and I've got Ninja Flex blocks at the end. So now I can push this and the blocks will move all around. So this can actually be the handle I hold onto, but if I mount these in something stiff, then I'll be able to move this in all directions and I'll be able to measure how much force I'm applying. And the rest of the design looks like this. So there's my yellow handle, the steel is running in there. We've got the Ninja Flex pieces here and these are encased uh, in these large prints which are going to um, actually hold that thing inside there so um, if we just get rid of that we can see there's a nice uh, place for that to go and the uh, same shape in the matching lid to hold that nice and tight. Now in the ends of these we're going to put the force sensitive resistors which is what those slots are for. Now living inside there is another Ninja Flex block with some pads on to press on the force sensitive resistors and that of course presses on the inside of the block at the top. On the inside there's just a cutout and obviously these slots allow me to bond the force sensitive resistors to the surfaces so that that cap part will actually press just on it as I move the lever around in those Ninja Flex bushings. So these parts are Lulzbot more Struder prints, which has a 1.2mm nozzle and makes incredibly tough parts. They're printed in PLA so they don't warp. And of course my handle now fits in there, so we'll just push that in. There we go, and the caps go on top, and they've got screw holes to screw those down and hold that nice and tight. So now I've got something to hold my handle where I can push that all around. I've just screwed down my towers there to a piece of test plywood just so I can grab this and move it all around. So um, it feels pretty firm. It might be too firm actually. I might have to change those bushings. It really depends because I need to be able to twist in all directions. But um, I've got the cap on there and I've got one of my FSR holders installed. On the inside it looks like this. So we've got those full sensitive resistors, five of them stuck around all of the surfaces. So we can measure when the bar moves in all directions and the wires helpfully stick out there so I can solder to them. Right, so I've just linked that up to a temporary Arduino Mega, which will um, swap obviously for the one that's on the suit at the moment. I've uh, left the analog pins that are already in use by those pots on the arm joints. So I'm just reading all those FSRs with the analog ins. And the Arduino code's pretty simple. We're just doing lots of analog reads, and at the moment we're just dumping those out to the terminal. So we can see when we don't press the FSRs, we get um, 1023. 
And when we start to press them, they dip down. So if I were to push down on this, we should see two of those go almost to zero. And if I were to pull up, we should get another two. Um, obviously we've got them in the ends, so if I push it, we get some. If I twist it, we get different pairs as well. So using that logic, we can work out what I'm actually doing, whether I'm twisting it in which direction, pulling it straight in any of the axis, and we can work out how much pressure I'm applying. So, so far we've got five axes, which are this way, this way, and this way, and we've also got twist in two axis. The only axis we don't have is twisting this way, but that's fine because we've only got four axis in the arm. So let's give those axes a spin. So that way is me twisting my hand this way, so that works pretty well. If I twist my hand forward and backwards, then, then we get that um, elbow joint works. And pushing up and down should operate the shoulder up and down, but I'm finding that quite difficult actually, so it does work, but it's very hard because I'm pushing against the suit rather than twisting the handle against itself. I'm actually finding it, it'd probably be fine if it was carrying a heavy weight because then I'd have something to push against. So um, even turning the sensitivity right up on that, it's actually really difficult to, uh, to do it. Similarly, just pushing outwards to push the arm around, I'm having real difficulty with that. I don't think I can even exert enough force. And I have redesigned the Ninja Flex bushings so they're more like a web. So there's hardly any uh, Ninja Flex there and there's more air, but even so, it's actually still very hard to exert enough force on those force sensitive resistors to get them to register. But the twisting axis work fine. Right, so now I've taken out the ones that are webs and you can see there's hardly anything to them and they're incredibly flexible and I've put back in the ones that are sort of all filled in but they're in a really, really low density infill. And for some reason that makes up and down work again. So now just pushing on those end force sensitive resistors seems to actually drive the arm. But obviously it's made the others um, quite a bit stiffer. Although they work, they work pretty well. I guess because I'm twisting against the whole mechanism, it's got something to brace against, but still pushing outwards I just can't do. So to fix that, I've now implemented a little button here, which is a bit like a shift key, and when I press it, it swaps around some of the axis. So with it unpressed, the arm works as it did. But now if I press it, and I also twist in the same way, it moves the arm back in that fashion. So uh, that seems to work pretty well. And I've got, um, pretty much got, pretty much uh, got control of everything there. So I've got all of my axes. The up and down uh, works well enough. If I'm lifting something, then it works pretty well. So I think that's probably gonna be okay. It's not ideal though, and I think I probably needed something um, like the thing that I started with. It also seems to be very hard to push the force sensitive resistors gently to um, move slowly, even though there is scaling in there. So uh, perhaps something like this, where I could have pushed um, to an actual angle would have been better. And as the, the arm caught me up, then it centers and goes back to zero. Uh, this is probably too slack, though. I probably need something more elaborate uh, with some actual sort of springs on that center it. So I've got something to push against. Um, but perhaps some other pressure switch actually made of a pot or something more sensitive. I'm not sure why the force sensitive resistors, it seems that once I've applied enough force to basically push them, it's everything and it's very hard to get any granular control. That said, of course, um, since I've got a shift key anyway for one of those axes, I probably could have just used normal analog joysticks and then just had a couple of buttons that swap over the axis and that would have given me four axes. Perhaps when I press the shift key, the two axes swap to be the other two. Um, and that probably would have been much easier to drive around, especially if my forearm was locked onto the suit and it's only my wrist that moves. So I've still actually got hold of the arm there and I've still got something stiff attaching me to the actual mechanics. Of course, I could have used the three axis joystick like on my Robot X controller, which moves in the normal two axis plus the top turns for the third axis. And perhaps that could be on a rig that moves up and down so I get the fourth axis. Or I could just have a shift key somewhere on the suit that turns one of those into the fourth axis. So that would work quite well as well if my wrist was again fixed and I just move the uh, joystick round with my hands whilst my arm moves with the rest of the suit. And of course it is possible to make motors move slowly and very accurately as I've done with uh, various robots and things, but obviously the position was coded into code uh, rather than being controlled by me holding a stiff handle attached to the thing that's actually moving. And you can see with the up and down movement, once you've pushed up, 
the suit moves up and then I'm not pushing up anymore unless I keep applying pressure, which is kind of how I want it to work, but it's kind of a different uh, kind of control feeling altogether. So of course I could have more controls on this side, which is what I intended. So we could have a fine speed control that means all the joints move more slowly for more precise control. Uh, probably I could have got away with micro switches on this side, but there we go. This whole suit is fairly hacky. It's a learning exercise, hopefully to build something more refined in the future. But now we need to look at those legs again and see if I can make those move when I move enough that I can walk along. Right, it's pretty hacky, but we're just using switches this time. So I've printed these plates and there's one for my knee and the one for the calf, the switch is underneath. You can probably hear that switching. And it just switches the switch and that's gonna move the motor in either direction. Well, it was much easier to coordinate with those knee switches operating the legs rather than the little joysticks that I did last time. But looking back on the old footage, it appears that I could take bigger steps before. I'm not entirely sure why that is, but um, I'm pretty happy that I've made this thing. I can walk along in it. It's got a powered arm. It holds itself up and it can actually hold me up as well. The uh, frame itself can support far more load. So uh, basically it kind of uh, fits the description of an exosuit but I actually think I could build something much better. So last time we discussed what might go on this side to help balance it up, but I actually don't want to add any more weight. Ideally, I'd have two arms and then it would be quite well balanced, but the arm I've got is really heavy already. And the way I've built most of the axis doesn't allow any space for another arm to be built. Around the back here, we can see we've got this main axis here, which the whole arm pivots on. That's the axis I was having trouble with earlier. And you could see in that footage, it was quite wobbly. And as I uh, walk along, this is quite wobbly as well. And we've got this piece here with rollers and the gearbox is here, uh, pulling like this and pulling like this and pulling around a sprocket with a chain. And that swings the whole arm. So this consumes the entire back of the suit. Um, it's gonna be very hard to compress this and get another one on the other side. And even so, I'm not sure it's the best design anyway. As I've said in the last few episodes, this is quite hacky and the idea is to do a learning experience to see what's possible. And basically I've kind of achieved that. But now I'm thinking about what I really want to do and what people really want to see. So we could carry bolting things on. There was gonna be a kind of thing that folded down with some displays and stuff in and kind of blinging the suit up and making it look like an alien's power loader or whatever. Obviously the original idea was to do an Iron Man exosuit. We haven't really achieved that. Although, you know, things are bigger in real life and it's always going to be bigger than the fictional equivalent. But I think what I'd really like to do is make something that is more compact and basically go throughout the suit, refreshing all the parts, making something a bit more sleek, a bit more like it could be something from the military or something that could be sort of in science fiction. I'd like to use some other materials. I think wood is still okay. Plywood is pretty strong. It's stronger than steel, pounds for a pound, but I'd also like to use some actual steel, perhaps box sections to make those legs a lot thinner and have some nice kind of contoured pieces in there instead of kind of all of these straight boxy pieces and bits of wood screwed on and wires and everything all over the place. My 3D printed gearboxes have worked out really well though with those cheap motors, which are the 3674 brushless RC motor and the brushless um, motor drivers there and the normal ba RC batteries and then these blocks and tackles to multiply the load up. So I've been pretty happy with that. They're immensely strong in fact, and all my gears are in fact all still in one piece and I've had no problems at all with those. I think I could make these smaller though. They've got quite big gears in. These things are quite bulky. We could probably make them half the size and they'd be just as good. I'd also think I'd like a motor in the upper and lower leg and a much more refined leg. Uh, probably instead of having these silly switches, we'll have some sort of floating cradle and we'll put one on the ankle and one on the knee and those float around giving me an analog reading and that allows it to actually follow my leg and catch up and stop accurately to the position my leg is actually in. I think what I'd rather do with the arms instead of having one axis attached to the next axis, attached to the next axis, attached to the next axis, 
all hung on the final axis basically, which is where all this wobble has come from. It'd be much better just to have one sort of ball axis, like a human shoulder, have really high shoulder points and have actuators that pull down all around it to move it around. So I think that could be a much better approach. It probably saved me a lot of weight of building all of those axes and all of those hinge points as well. Then it would be much more compact and we can get two arms in, which I think is what people really want to see. And it's certainly what I'd really like is to have two arms that I can move around. So essentially it's time for a refresh of the exosuit. So I'm going to take a step back next time, redesign the legs and work from the legs up this time instead of the other way around and basically decide how that looks with those two motors in each leg, how exactly the mechanics work and how compact I can make it. So it is something that's more like an Iron Man suit and less like um, a load of wood hacked together with screws and metal plates. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and all the other projects. And also it's really important that these projects are funded through Patreon. So have a look at my Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash xrobots. And you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including all my videos early, a sneak peeks and picks almost every day on my Patreon wall for patrons only, and also a regular live stream with me. All right, that's all for now.